Hi everyone, hope you're doing well. In this video, I'd like to talk to you about a recipe for extremely reproducible enrichment analysis, a new protocol from my group. And you might be asking yourself, well, you know, we already have so many different um, methods for enrichment analysis. Why do we need this protocol? Well, um, the, the in a nutshell, um, the reproducibility level of enrichment analysis on the whole is not very good. And so what I thought I'd do is put together a protocol that aims to do things in an extremely reproducible way, meaning that this, this work can be reproduced uh, exactly with the same results every time, no matter what sort of computer you're working on, and um, in a way that makes it easy for someone to download and reproduce it. So just very briefly talking about some of the features of this protocol, it uses an R markdown script, uh, which means that we can use all of those lovely packages from CRAN and Bioconductor for the R programming language. And this is going to be working inside of a Docker container. So this means that it's uh, reproducible from a uh, compute environment standpoint. And the protocol also uh, will walk you through a few other best practices, including source control, um, enhanced documentation, and then how to archive data and code for the long run. Um, so with that in mind, I'm going to go through these steps of the protocol uh, with you right now. Um, the first part that we're going to go through is uh, installing Docker and making sure Docker is working, um, downloading a previously pre um, prepared workflow uh, in Docker, executing that and showing you how straightforward that side of things can be. And then in future videos, um, I'll be talking about how to customize the scripts that we've provided to, to for your own project. So um, let's get started. So firstly, here we are on our Linux desktop. If you have a Windows machine or a, a Mac, then you'll need to either get a virtual machine or some other way to access um, this. Um, this protocol might work for other sorts of Linux distributions, but uh, so far it's just working for Ubuntu version 22. And this work is going to be mostly in the terminal. So if you are uh, if you don't have terminal open, you can use this um, button down here in the dock. And if that's not in the dock, then you can use the show applications menu and then type terminal and then uh, open it this way by clicking on it or dragging it down to the dock so that you've got quick access to it. All right, so that's uh, opening a terminal. The next thing we'll do is to install Docker. So it's good practice to update your system before uh, installing any major packages. So we'll do that first with update. Um, you'll notice here that I'm using sudo, and um, that means that you'll need uh, admin permissions for this to work. So that looks like it's fine. If you don't have admin permissions on your system, uh, you can ask nicely for them. Um, or you can, um, yeah, if you don't have a, a sudo password, <clears throat> this protocol is not going to work for you. So um, in the description of this video, I'll leave um, an uh, amended protocol that you can use um, for this to work. All right, so now we're just um, removing any packages that are unnecessary. Just tidying up things before we install Docker. You might not get any output, but um, depending on the state of your system. And there are different types of Docker that can be installed. We're going to install the one that's provided in the Ubuntu apt um, package manager. So here we go. We're going to download this now. It might take a few seconds 
So I might fast forward to the end. Okay, that was pretty quick actually, so that's fine. Um, so one thing we need to do is to add ourselves to the user group, to the Docker user group, um, so that we don't need to use the admin or sudo password each and every time we want to execute a Docker command. So to do this, we use the user mod command a g Docker group and user. And that will add me to the groups. And then I can um, type the command su minus and then user. And what this does is it kind of logs back in uh, with this user so that uh, when we have a look at groups, we'll see that um, the user mdz is in the Docker group. So that means that we can do uh, something like Docker PS to see the, the um, currently running uh, containers. There's nothing there. Uh, we can also do Docker images um, and you can see that we don't have any images loaded right now. All right, so that's Docker installed. That was relatively straightforward. Uh, what we'll do now is to uh, pull the example enrichment uh, workflow uh, and run that. Uh, so let's give it a try. So Docker pull mz now enrichment recipe. So this is um, an image that I prepared previously. It is working. Uh, it might take a couple of minutes to download all of that because it is a relatively heavy uh, image with um, some data attached to it. So I might fast forward that now. Okay, that just took a minute to finish the download. And now we've got that uh, image and it's ready to go. What we'll do is have a look at that image to make sure it has been um, installed. And there it is there. Yeah, so it did take, take a little while because it's a four gigabyte uh, image, but uh, it looks like it downloaded properly. So let's get on with the next part. So uh, Docker run. Uh, so we're going to launch this, um, this image. Um, and we're going to use bash as the entry point. So what that means is when this container runs, we're going to get an interactive shell prompt. Just like that. So we, we are now inside this uh, image, which is a bit like a virtual machine. So if I do ls uh, and take a look at the contents of the current working directory inside this uh, container, we can see we've got um, the contents of the uh, GitHub repository for this particular project, which is really nice. So we've got the workflow that we're going to run. It's called example.rmd plus all the other files that are in that repository. This one here, React and Pathways, is the one that we're going to be using as the database of pathways for our enrichment analysis. All right, so I guess we'll just get started. So uh, we can open up R with the R command. That's uh, easy enough. Once we're inside there, to compile or execute that example.rmd script, we use R markdown, render, uh, example.rmd. So that should regenerate the analysis shown in the um, uh, example. And it's going to create a HTML file called example.html. It might take a couple of minutes for this to complete, so I might pause it now and come back to you in a couple of minutes. Okay, so a couple of minutes have gone by and it's completed that analysis and has created that example.html file. So we're quite safe here to exit R. 
and then exit the container and drop down to our um, uh, directory that we are working in. Um, and what we'll do is we'll copy the uh, example.html from inside the container to outside so that we can inspect the results and confirm that it has been reproduced. So to do this, we use the docker cp command and in a nested command, we have to find the last um, container with docker ps um, and the, these options just give us the, the identifier of that container, I think that'll be this code here. Uh, nevertheless, we will get that HTML file and copy it. And now when we have a look at the contents of this folder, we can see that example.html is there. Okay, so on the right-hand side here, I've got my file explorer and I can double click on that and I will bring up for you guys the window if I can get the window to move. There we go. That was a bit more difficult than I thought. Okay, so here we have that freshly um, produced um, R Markdown report and yeah, as you can see, it's in the typical markdown uh, format with lots of uh, background explanation, um, a table of contents here. So we can have a look at how um, the quality control was done. I guess all the different steps, differential expression with DEseq and all the code is here in the um, uh, in the chunks there. There's the DEseq code. Um, here we go with the um, enrichment using the over-representation test with, um, with cluster profiler, here it is, using the enricher tool. And then secondly, using uh, FGSEA, which is a type of functional class scoring. So there's that. Um, then we can, I've got a code here which compares the results and we can do some follow-up visualization, of course, on specific pathways. So based on this, I can say that, yes, it was reproduced all correctly, as we would expect. So that was terrific. Uh, so you can see that uh, in just five or 10 minutes, you can um, uh, set up Docker, pull a image, run a container, and um, reproduce the analysis, but this is really only possible if it's all set up in the right way. Um, and that's what we're gonna do in the next couple of videos, focus up, focus ourselves on how do we create a, um, a body of work that can be reproduced in five to 10 minutes. So um, stay tuned for that one coming up and uh, thanks for your attention today and bye for now.